Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and today I'm gonna show you how to super clean the interior of your car. We'll be using Susan the Vandalized Car as one example, because the interior of this car is a mess. It is covered in dirt, quite literally covered in dirt and mud, and that's because it was vandalized. But not everybody is gonna have a vandalized car, so I also have my sister's daily driver. This is the more typical dirtiness that you'd probably find in your car. So between this car and the vandalized car, we have plenty of amazing examples so I could show you how to super clean the interior so let's get started and this video is going to show you how to clean the dashboard specifically the dashboard vents the gauge cluster the infotainment screen all the knobs and buttons and the steering wheel then I'll show you how to clean the door panels which in this car are really bad after that we'll clean the center console which is also really bad with melted candies and who knows what this gooey mess is inside here and finally, we're gonna finish up by cleaning the glass, so let's get started. Now to clean all that, here are the tools and products that you're gonna need. I tried to keep it simple. Product-wise, we have our cleaners, we have our protectors, and we have a glass cleaner, specific to glass because we don't want streaks and we don't want to damage the tint. I'll cover more about that when we go over the glass, but that is it product-wise. Tool-wise, again, trying to keep it simple, but very important. I highly, highly suggest that you pick yourself up some of these brushes. Brushes are gonna make the difference between clean and super clean. Trust me on that, you'll see the difference. And besides brushes, just a bunch of microfiber towels, and that's really it. Now, you see some other products here. You don't need these, but I'm gonna go over them because they do help out a lot, and they're not very expensive, including this vacuum attachment, which helps get you into those tight places to remove dust and dirt. We have this, which helps get you into the tight places when you clean the windshield, between the windshield and the dash super helpful again not completely necessary and then finally a steam cleaner this might be necessary on this car because it is disgusting in that center console and I want to kill all the bacteria all the mold and everything that could have built up in there I want to make sure not only is it clean but it's sanitary and this is gonna help sanitize but that's all the tools and products that you're gonna need I'll be sure to link all these in the description so you can easily find them the idea is to keep it affordable to keep it simple and that's it right there so let's go get started all right to start the super clean it's important to roll down your windows to prevent any oily protectants from getting on them which is a pain to clean off you're also going to want to disconnect the battery since the doors are going to be open and you don't want to drain the battery and finally we need to remove the seats so we have more access to the interior so with the seats removed the last thing we need to do in the preparation step is to clean out the center console and there is a ton to clean in this car the center console is loaded with melted candies, junk, and just disgusting sticky change. Ugh. So make sure you clean out the entire center console in your car, and hopefully it isn't as bad as this sticky mess. I can't wait to get this cleaned up. So next up, let's clean the dashboard, and I have a bunch of tips and tricks to make the dashboard come out amazing. So real quick, here's the three-step process I use to clean the dash. First, we're going to remove all the dust from the dash. After that, we're going to clean the dash. We're going to remove the stains and all that dirt that's on there. After it's clean, we're going to do one final step and protect the dash. That way, in the future, we don't get any cracks, we don't get any fading, and it'll look great for years to come. That's all you need to do to super clean your dash, so let's get started. And I like to start by cleaning the vents. A lot of people skip this because it's difficult to get to everything in here but these carry a lot of dust. They don't look good if they're not cleaned. So the trick to cleaning vents is to use a brush like one of these. I personally like to use this brush. It's inexpensive and it has these microfiber fingers that make it easy to get into the vent. So let me show you how to clean this. Okay, so start off by brushing the vents with the vacuum nearby to suck up any dust that we brush off. Then you wanna use the other end of the brush to clean each of the fins in the vent. And you can really see how awesome this works to get in between each of the fins and really get it clean. Just look at all the dirt and dust we removed. Now with that, we were able to clean the fins on the vent, and we were able to get in there just a little bit, but how do you get deep in there? Well, you could get yourself one of these vacuum attachments that basically has a bunch of straws on the end, and this will let you get really deep in there and get out all that dust. So just connect the vacuum attachment and fit the straws between the vents, and you can see how well this works to get in there deep. Like the brush we just used, this is just another tool that works amazing for removing dust, not only on the surface, but deep in the vents. And this is gonna give them that extra clean. And check that out, that looks really good. I don't see any more dust, and that's way better than what it was before. All right, so now we can just finish up removing the dust from the rest of the vents, and so you have a good idea of the difference. Here's a before, and here's an after. Next, we need to dust the rest of the dash, and to do that, I'm gonna use a microfiber towel that has a high pile. 
Now a high pile are these long fibers sticking out of the microfiber towel, and these are helpful because it traps dirt and dust. There's just more surface area for it to cling to. And instead of dusting dry, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab just plain old water and I'm gonna wet this down, but never use any sprays inside the interior of your car. Now this is just water, so it's not a big deal, but once we start using cleaners, we don't want the mist to get all over the interior of the car, because we can't control the mist. It's gonna get on the glass, it's gonna get in places that we don't want it to be. So start practicing now, even if it's just water, on spraying outside the car. So we're gonna lightly mist this down, and if you're inside the car, you can spray, but make sure you're spraying directly into the towel like that so it's not getting everywhere. And after this is just slightly damp, we are ready to go and dust the dashboard. So just lightly glide the towel across the surface of the dash and the damp fibers of the towel are gonna pick up the dust and remove it from the dash. And it's so satisfying seeing the dust get picked up and leaving behind a nice dust-free dash. Also, don't forget to clean the dust off the infotainment screen and the surrounding area like so. And also down here where the buttons and the dials are, use a brush to dust that up and get it nice and dust-free. All right, so now we're gonna remove the dust near the steering wheel and gauge bezel. And I have a couple of very important tips and tricks so that you don't scratch up the plastic lens on that gauge bezel. The first tip is never, ever, ever use a paper towel, a napkin, a tissue, anything dry to wipe down or dust your gauge bezel. That is guaranteed to cause visible scratching. What I recommend you doing is getting a very soft microfiber towel that is lightly misted with water. And all you're gonna do, very light pressure, put it on the gauge bezel and just swipe straight across. And you can do it the other way as well. Again, very light pressure and just swipe straight across just like that. As long as your microfiber towel is clean, it's a little damp and it's very soft, you won't get any visible scratching. And one more thing I wanna quickly mention. You might be tempted to use compressed air to blow away any of the dust over here, but don't do it. You could blow the dust underneath the gauge bezel and get behind that gauge bezel. The only way to clean the dust if it gets behind there is to take that entire gauge cluster out, remove that plastic bezel and dust it off. Definitely don't make the mistake of using compressed air. And just take a look at that gauge bezel. That looks amazing. So that is how you properly dust and clean a gauge bezel. That way you don't cause any scratches at all. Now real quick, what happens if you use a paper towel on this? Well, let me show you. So right here I have a very nice Honda Del Sol gauge bezel and I'm gonna grab a paper towel and wipe down an area just so you can see what kind of scratches it creates. Okay, so here's a dry towel and I'm gonna lightly wipe back and forth in this area so you can see our damage from the paper towel, which is that right there. And just to show you, a microfiber towel isn't gonna damage it like we did with that paper towel. I'm gonna go right next to it. It's a damp microfiber towel. I'm gonna press hard, which you're not supposed to. And after that water evaporates, you can see there is no scratching at all where I just pressed over here. Let's try the same thing with a brush. And actually, you can see there is a little bit of light scratching on there. Not as bad as the paper towel, but still not good. So as they say, the proof is in the pudding. That's exactly why I like doing simple tests like this. This way you guys get to see real life results. So stick to using your microfiber towel that is lightly misted with water to dust off the gauge bezel so you don't get any scratches. Next, let's move on to the cleaning step. Now it's very important you find yourself a cleaner that cleans all the different materials you could find on your dash. We have vinyl, we have plastic, we have metal, we have all the buttons and dials and the little printed designs on them. The infotainment screen, and I think you get the idea. We don't wanna mess any of this up. So you wanna use something mild or find yourself something that's specifically made for the interior and it'll tell you on the instructions what it'll work on. Now this will work on everything except suede. We don't have any suede in here, so we don't have to worry. Now before you go spraying down the dash and cleaning it up, remember those little spray droplets aren't controllable. If you spray inside the car, it's gonna go up onto the glass. It's gonna go in places that you don't want it to. So what I like to do is I like to get my brush. This is my cleaning brush. I labeled it so I don't mix it up with any of the other brushes. You just get the cleaner right in there and spray it a couple times just so you have a bunch of cleaner then brush the cleaner into the dash and don't be afraid to really saturate that dash. It's gonna help dissolve the dirt and as you brush, it's gonna lift it off. Now I recommend a brush over a towel because the brush is gonna get into the crevices. Here's an up close look of the brush in action on this textured surface. The bristles are really gonna get in there and clean that dirt out. Just to show you, I'll wipe it down and look at that. So here was the before and after. 
So like I said, trust me, start using brushes to clean and detail your interior and you're gonna see a huge difference. Brushes are good because they also help you get into those tight spaces like right here where the dash meets the glass so you're able to clean the entire dash. Now after you're done cleaning, don't let this dry because the dirt is just gonna dry onto the dash. Immediately wipe up all this with an absorbent microfiber towel. This is gonna pull the dirt and cleaner off the dash leaving behind a completely clean dash. And check it out, so this is nice and clean. And I cleaned the entire dash pad all the way to the driver's side. So this whole thing is clean. Now let's move on to the infotainment system. So here I like to start with the screen and work my brush into the corners where the screen meets the plastic. A lot of times dirt collects here and it's hard to get to with just a towel. And don't worry, this brush isn't gonna scratch the screen like the gauge bezel. This screen is actually designed to be touched so it's more durable. Then I like to immediately wipe off the screen so the cleaner doesn't dry and cause any streaking or staining. Then we could clean the rest of the dash with our brush, making sure that you're getting into the vents and just touching every single surface. And finally, we could wipe it down with the towel to remove the dirt and dry it off. Then the next thing we're cleaning are all these buttons and dials down here. And as you can imagine, the brush works amazing at getting into all the nooks and crannies. And don't forget to pay attention to the details, like this dirty textured surface on the gear selector knob. A toothbrush works amazing to agitate and loosen up that dirt from the knob. And this is something you're going to touch every time you get into the car, so it's important that it's cleaned. Also check the crevices where the dial meets the plastic. Dirt gets trapped in here, and it just makes the car look old and used. When you pay attention to the little details like this, your interior is going to look brand new when you're done cleaning it. Alright, so give it one last wipe down. Good. So with all the buttons and knobs clean, they look great. Our dash is coming out amazing. The last thing to clean is the steering wheel. Honestly, the steering wheel isn't that dirty. And just like the rest of the dash, all you need to do is brush it down with some cleaner. Then after you're done doing that, you could wipe it all up. And check it out, the steering wheel is looking amazing. But it didn't really take that much to make it look great because it wasn't very dirty. And I want to show you guys how to super clean a really dirty steering wheel. So. I'm going to show you how to clean the steering wheel in my sister's car because this has a very common dirtiness to it. Something that if you take a look at your steering wheel, I bet you you'll see. And that is all of this, this discoloration. The steering wheel should be gray, like a dark gray, almost black. And you can see that light gray in there. It almost looks worn down. It almost looks like the leather or the vinyl is worn out. But it isn't. That is actually dirt. Just think about it, as you drive, you're not going to be wearing gloves. You drive bare hand against the steering wheel and every time you drive, you're touching the steering wheel. That's a lot of contact. Now, the oils, the skin cells, any moisturizer, dirt, grime, grease, whatever is on your hands is going to get transferred to the steering wheel over time. And that's how it gets so dirty like this. So let me show you how to safely clean this off, that way your steering wheel looks brand new. And the reason why I say safely is because you don't want to use a product that creates a greasy or a slick finish. This isn't greasy, but it definitely creates a slick finish. So you wouldn't want to use something like this because you want to be able to grip onto your steering wheel. So to clean the steering wheel, we're going to quite simply just use some soapy water. So spray the soapy water onto a microfiber towel and clean off that dirt from the steering wheel. Soapy water is a degreaser, so that works really well for dissolving this greasy dirt. I mean, just look at this. Holy smokes, what a difference. So now just do the same thing. Use soapy water and rub it down with a towel to remove all that nasty, greasy dirt from the surface. And look at all the dirt we removed. Now we need to pay attention to the details, like this dirt stuck in the stitches. To remove this, grab a toothbrush with soapy water in the bristles and gently brush the stitches. The bristles get in there to those hard to reach spaces and it's going to clean up the steering wheel that much better. Then we could wipe the area down with the microfiber towel to absorb all that dirt and water and the results speak for themselves. Just take a look at how great this came out. Also, we can't forget about the face of the steering wheel where the horn and all the buttons are. So same thing here, we're brushing it down and then wipe it away to clean it off. And that's all there is to it. A little bit of soapy water and this steering wheel looks brand new. Check this out. All the stitching looks new. The base of the steering wheel looks new. It just looks so good and it's not greasy, it's not slippery, so it's safe. All right, so now that's how you clean a steering wheel. Let me show you real quick how to properly clean the turn signal. And cleaning turn signals is super easy, but very important. The most important thing is this right here. Any printed on or painted on symbols like that for your high beams, that comes off super easy. So use a soft microfiber towel with soapy water because it's nice and mild. And just lightly wipe back and forth to rub any of that dirt off, but not damage the high beam symbols. Good, and check out this before and after. And just as an example, on this stalk here in my truck, you could see the symbols are faded, and that's because I used an aggressive cleaner and I rubbed a little bit too hard. I caught myself, but I already faded half of this. I did this a long time ago and I learned my lesson ever since. So with the dash and the steering wheel completely clean in both of the cars, there's one more attention to detail I want to show you, 
located right under the dash. And that is cleaning your pedals. We're gonna be cleaning the brake pedal and the gas pedal. You can see how they get all dirty in there and that looks horrible. Now it's very, very important. Again, same as the steering wheel, do not use anything greasy. Don't use anything that gets this slick. You need maximum grip when you're pressing on the brakes. And the same thing goes for the gas pedal. So since our carpets are clean, put a towel under the pedals to catch any dirt or cleaner. Then get your brush with soapy water and brush away. These bristles are gonna get into all the hard to reach places like the indents in the rubber, and that makes all the difference with how this is gonna look. Now we can wipe down the pedal with a towel and take a look at that. So do the same thing with the gas pedal, brush it real good, and then wipe it down. Now here you can see there's still rocks stuck in the rubber and that really stands out. So get a small screwdriver or a pick like this and get all those rocks and dirt out. This might seem silly, but trust me, details like this make all the difference in making the interior of your car look super clean. And once it's clean, give it one last wipe down and here's a before and after, beautiful. And there you go, the dashboard is looking amazing. The gauges are nice and clean, our steering wheel's clean and those pedals are clean. So now we can move on to the next step. And that is to protect the dash. And to do that, we're gonna be using a protectant with UV inhibitors like this. Now it's very important, we do not wanna use a high gloss protectant. We wanna use a natural shine, a low gloss or a matte protectant because this is our dash. There's a lot of lights from cars, from the sun, from street lights. We don't want that reflecting into our eyes and a high gloss finish will do exactly that. So trust me, don't use high gloss, stick to the natural shine and that's what we'll be using. Why not? Let me show you the difference between a high gloss shine and a natural shine so you can see what I'm talking about about. All right, this side's gonna be the natural low gloss shine and this side's gonna be the high gloss shine. So apply the protectant onto the panel and then buff it off with a clean towel and follow the exact same process on the other side. And you can totally see the difference already between the two. I'm gonna remove the tape and look at that. There's actually a line that shows the difference. So we have our low gloss and then we have our high gloss and they both look great. They both do the same exact thing. They both protect with UV inhibitors. It just depends what you like better. Now on the dash, definitely stick with low gloss so you don't get blinded. On everything else, I personally like that high gloss look. It's not crazy high gloss, but it looks good, it looks new, so that's what I'll do for the rest of it. But for the dash, we're gonna stick to low gloss. So there you go, look at that difference, that's awesome. Let's go get started and protect the dash. Okay, so spray your low gloss protectant onto your brush and work that protectant into the dash. Make sure you use a lot of the protectant to really saturate the dash and let that dash absorb that protectant. And be sure to hit every spot of the dash, that way the finish will be even. Now when you're adding the protectant where the windshield and dash meet, take your time here. You don't wanna get any of this protectant on the glass cause it's gonna be a pain to remove. And the brush definitely makes it easy to get into these tight spaces, which is nice. Now you're gonna wanna let it sit for a minute or two. And then after that, you could buff off the protectant with a clean microfiber towel. And if your dash is really faded, using a protectant is gonna make a night and day difference. It'll make your dash look brand new. So if your dash is faded, definitely give this a try. Perfect. Okay, so we protected the entire dash pad all the way across to the driver's side. That's looking amazing. We didn't get any of that protectant on the glass, which is a good thing. Now let me show you how to protect the infotainment system. Now I think you get the idea of the protecting process. For the infotainment screen, the only thing you need to do is make sure that you don't get any protectant on the screen because it can stain. And if you do get some on there by mistake, just buff it off with a clean microfiber towel right away. Now this looks awesome, but remember, this is all about paying attention to the details. And if we look right here, you see that? You see that little white speck? That is some dirt stuck between the two pieces of trim and we want to remove that because little things like that make all the difference between how clean this actually looks. So get in there with the bristles of your brush. Beautiful. And look at that. That looks so much better. For the buttons and dials, it's the same process, but here I'm using the high gloss protectant to give it a shinier finish, which I personally like better. And since it's lower on the dash, we don't have to worry about the glare from the sun or street lights. I just love how this brings back that deep dark color to the faded plastics. It looks amazing. So with that looking beautiful, we are almost done. One more thing left to do, and that is definitely not the steering wheel. We do not want any protectant on here because it'll make it slippery, but that doesn't mean we can't protect the plastic behind the steering wheel. So lower the steering wheel to get more access and all of the plastics back here are fair game to protect, including the vinyl boot of the steering column. Just don't get any of that protectant on the gauge bezel and don't get it on the steering wheel. And finally, as you buff all this off, one spot many people miss is the gap between the steering wheel and the base. Dust gets in here, dirt gets in here, it makes it look old and used. So get your towel and floss in this gap. Trust me, it makes all the difference with how clean this car is going to look when we're done. 
So there you go. That is how you clean and protect your dash. All this over here. I know it's a little extensive. There's a lot of different pieces between the buttons, the infotainment system, the steering wheel, the gauges, all this stuff. There's a lot of little bits and pieces, but that is how you clean everything. It's super simple. And look at these results. Even if your car isn't that dirty, it's just a little bit older and needs to be touched up, trust me, it will look amazing after you clean and protect it. Plus, it's protected so you don't have to worry about the dash fading anymore. It'll bring it back to life and it just looks absolutely incredible. Look at that. Now there's one more thing I want to show you because I don't see any gloss plastics in here. It's mostly just this uh, vinyl plastic. We have a little bit of like matte plastic, but some cars have a gloss finish to it, almost like a clear coat on the interior. For example, the interior of this Maserati has a bunch of gloss surfaces. So how do you clean them? Well, I like to treat it the same way I would treat a painted surface. I like to use a waterless wash and wax, and it has the wash in it so it'll clean it, and then it has the wax in it so that it'll protect it. So make sure you use a clean microfiber towel and apply a bunch of the waterless wash and wax right to the towel. Then you're gonna lightly buff it onto any of the gloss plastic surfaces, mostly this wood trim right here. Let it sit for a minute, and then get a clean dry part of your microfiber towel and lightly buff it off. Ooh, baby, and look at that. That looks so good. So any gloss plastic interior pieces, that is how I like to clean and protect them. Quick one-step process, and we could clean all of the gloss plastics in the car, including the door panel gloss plastics. Now, speaking of the door panel, let's move on to the next step. All right, so next up, let's clean the door panels. And this is about as bad as it gets. The door panels on this car are horrible. They are covered in mud and dirt. So let me show you how to get this all clean. Now the good thing is this is a very similar process to how we clean the dash. So we're gonna apply the same exact concept. So let's start by vacuuming the dirt out of the fabric so we could clean this. Also vacuum up the door pocket up here and the pocket down here and get all that junk out of there. Good. Now it's time to clean the door panel and just like the dash, use a cleaner and a brush to get into all those tight places and textured surfaces. This includes window switches and a brush works amazing on these. We also want to remove this rubber insert in the door pocket, that way we could clean it good. Now with everything brushed with cleaner, wipe it down with a towel and this is looking better already. For the fabric, spray it down with carpet cleaner and then agitate it with a brush to loosen up any of the dirt. Then we can use a shop vac to suck the carpet cleaner and dirt out of the fabric and finish this off by wiping it down with a towel to absorb any of the remaining liquid and dirt. And take a look at all the dirt that we pulled out of this. Nice. Another part to pay attention to is the speaker cover, which is almost impossible to clean with just a towel. But when you use a brush, you get into all the little holes, and it's amazing how good this looks when we could actually get in there and clean it. And to remove the soapy water, wipe it down with a towel, and then follow up with a vacuum cleaner to suck it out of all the holes. Next up, I'm using a high gloss protectant for the door panels. Just like the dash, saturate the panel with the protectant, making sure you get complete coverage so the finish is even and not blotchy. And don't worry, you could even apply this to the vinyl or leather armrests you have to protect it. For this door, you could actually get it on everything except don't get it on the fabric and don't get it on the window. That's why we roll the window down. Then we could buff the protectant off using a microfiber towel and this is coming out absolutely amazing. Even this newer plastic is slightly faded and the protectant just brings it back to that deep, dark, rich look. Also, don't forget about the rubber insert. Brush some protectant on there and then buff it off. And then now we can reinstall that back into the pocket. Good. And finally, for the speaker cover, use the brush to get the protectant into the holes and then wipe it down with the towel and you're good to go. Now this is looking absolutely awesome. Now I do want to reiterate something. I don't care what protectant you use. Just make sure it has UV inhibitors and it dries so it's not greasy and won't attract dust. Super, super important. So just to show you guys, I have a nice new towel. This is not greasy at all. It dries nice and slick and it makes it so dust comes right off. You just wipe it like that and you can see no grease at all. And that's exactly what you want. And holy smokes, look at how incredible this looks. This looks literally brand new. It looks amazing. And it's protected. That's what I'm talking about. Check out this before and after. What a transformation. Now you might be thinking you're done with the door, but you're not. There's a couple other things that are important. When you open the door, you see the door jam. You don't want to keep that looking disgusting. So grab your waterless wash and wax and spray down your towel. And then just gently wipe away the dirt off the door sills to get this beautiful finish like this. Another detail we want to pay attention to is the rubber wire loom protector in the door jam. So clean the dirt off the rubber 
and then apply the protectant to it, which is not only going to keep the rubber looking really good, but it's also going to protect it so it's less likely to crack or split due to age. And check it out, that looks way better. Finally, the last part is to clean the door sill plastic, which usually gets pretty muddy from stepping on it or kicking it as you get in and out of the car. And the best part is with this protected, if you get mud on the plastic, it's going to clean up so much easier, which is nice because door sills always get dirty. Now while you're cleaning the door jams, you might realize that there are some spots that just aren't coming out. They're embedded contaminants in the paint. So to remove that, just grab your clay bar, spray the area down with your wash and wax, and glide your clay bar across the surface back and forth using medium pressure. Just make sure that clay bar is lubricated and you'll be fine. And you can see how the clay bar is picking up the contaminants. And we can just wipe it down and let's see what it looks like now. And look at how good this looks. There are no specks anymore and this looks brand new. All those specks, all the contaminants, well that got pulled up into our clay bar and removed from the paint. And one last thing to show you with the door jams, if you have chipped paint like that, it's very easy to touch it up. Even if it doesn't look perfect, it'll look way better than a dark mark like that, which looks like dirt. So grab your touch-up pen, give it a shake, and I will go into more detail on how to use a touch-up pen to remove scratches and chips in another video. But here, it's just so easy. Let me show you real quick. At the end of the touch-up pen, you have a scraper. So go into each of those chips, scrape it up. That way you're cleaning out the chip and the paint has something to adhere to. And then I'll take the tip off and just carefully touch up the chip. Don't use too much paint because you don't want it to run. And that looks perfect. And that's all there is to it. That looks way better than two dark marks. And it's real quick and easy to do, so it's worth the couple seconds that it takes. So now we could clean and protect the rear driver's side door panel, as well as the painted door sill and the plastic door sill. And then we could do the rear passenger side door panel. And it's amazing how big of a difference cleaning the painted door sill makes. And the same thing for the plastic door sill. This just looks so much better. And finally, the front passenger door panel didn't have a dramatic before and after. It wasn't very dirty to start with, but I cleaned it and I protected it. And the door jam's looking amazing. And it is all done. These door panels are looking absolutely brand new. What a difference a little bit of cleaning and protecting makes. So with all the door panels completely clean, let's move on to the next step. All right, and next up, we are gonna be cleaning and protecting the center console, and this one's gonna be interesting because, well, it is disgusting. So let's start out by removing all these rubber inserts and cleaning them because, well, ugh, this is super disgusting. And it's nice that all these pockets in the center console have these rubber inserts because it just makes cleaning this out so easy. Just pull the insert out, and the dirt comes out with it. And we have one last one down here, good. And for anybody wondering, this right here is what you pull to get the car into neutral if the battery's dead or the shifter isn't working. All right, so these are absolutely disgusting. I know I keep saying that, but it's just, it's a mess. I mean, look at this. Oh, look, there's a beetle in that one. So we want to clean these out, and we also want to sanitize them. Let me show you how. All right, so now to clean this, we're using a steam cleaner. And just use the pressure and the heat from the steam to melt the sugars and blow it off the rubber. Remember, this is boiling water, so be careful, it's very hot. But you can see how well it works to push all this crud off the rubber. And not only are we cleaning off this crud, but we're also sanitizing it with the hot steam. And that works really well. Look at everything it pulled right off of our rubber piece. Now we can use our soapy water, spray it down, get that final bit of crud off of there. And then use a brush to agitate any leftover crud and loosen it up off the rubber. Then we can use the steam cleaner to blast away all the dirt and soap, leaving behind a nice, clean, and sanitary rubber insert. And finally, use the protectant on the rubber. Not only will this make it look good, but more importantly, if there's any future spills from a drink or candies that get melted in here, it's going to clean up and come off way easier. Now this is looking pretty good, so let's go clean the rest. Here is a before and after, and check it out. They came out looking amazing. It's clean, it's sanitary, and it's protected. Also, this is pretty cool. They have the skyline of Detroit where the car's made. I thought that was neat. All right, so let's go get these reinstalled in the car. Now, before you go put them back in, don't forget to clean out the actual center console. Good. And now we can put all the rubber pieces back, and there's something very satisfying with how they just fit right in. Also, you can't forget about cleaning and protecting the exterior part of the center console like that. Beautiful. So the last thing we need to do is address this issue right here. This is a 2016 with 50,000 miles. We shouldn't have this kind of damage, but we do. And you can repair this. You can do a leather repair on it. That's an entire other video. It's not worth it in this case because this is very inexpensive. I was able to find one for 25 bucks, so it's worth just swapping it out. So start by pulling off this plastic piece. And then there's four screws that we need to remove back here, which holds the console lid on. After all the screws are removed, it's out with the old and in with the new. 
And installation is reverse of removal. Just hand tighten down all four screws and don't over tighten them because they are just screwing into plastic. And then we can push this plastic trim back in so it clicks like so. And that is looking awesome and it works perfect, beautiful. So the center console is cleaned, it's protected, it's looking absolutely amazing. And for once, we're actually able to use it and it's not all disgusting in there. All right, so now that the center console in this car is done, let me show you the center console in my sister's car. Here's a before and after. Again, before and after. And finally, before and after. So while you might think we are done here, we got all the little details, this is looking amazing, we're not. Again, it's attention to detail, think about it. The only time you're in park is when you're not driving. So real quickly, I'm gonna chalk off the rear wheels. I put the key in the ignition, I have my foot on the brake. Let's move the shifter all the way down. And look at that, you can see all of this is dirty and it doesn't have a nice shine like the rest of it. So that's gonna stand out. So let's brush in our cleaner and clean that out, then hit it with our protectant, and using the brush here really helps get into those nooks and crannies. And then finally, wipe it down to finish it off. And that's what's gonna set your cleaning apart from everybody else's, attention to detail like that. And that's why this is a super clean video. Now let me show you the simple process for cleaning your glass so it's streak free and crystal clear every single time. I'm also gonna show you how to get into those tough to reach spots like between the dash and the windshield. And finally, I'm gonna show you how to clean the back glass with this heating element so we don't damage it. Now the most important part for cleaning glass is having the right glass cleaner. In cars, never use ammonia based glass cleaner. Always use a glass cleaner that says it is safe for tint, just like that. The next most important thing is using fresh, clean towels. I like using glass towels like this. They have a low pile, so they work really well for absorbing the dirt and oils in the glass. And then you want a buffing towel like this that has a higher pile. That way we could buff all the streaks away, and I'll show you that when we get to it. And finally, you don't need it, but I'm gonna show you how this works because this works really well for getting into those tight to reach spaces. So let's start by reconnecting the battery and then roll up the windows so that we could clean them. So getting clear streak-free glass is very simple. Don't make it more difficult than it has to be. All you need is a cleaning towel, which is gonna get saturated by cleaner, and then a drying towel, which you're gonna use to dry the glass. And finally, you want a soft buffing towel, which is gonna get that glass streak-free and crystal clear. So let's start off with the cleaning towel. Never spray directly onto the glass because it'll get all over those nice clean door panels. Instead, spray onto your cleaning towel like that. Get it nice and damp and then wipe down the glass with the towel. I like to wipe down horizontally, then go vertically, and I'm using medium to heavy pressure, and I just wanna make sure I wipe the entire window down. The cleaner is what's gonna remove the greases and the oils and the dirt from the glass. Then go in with your drying towel, and same thing, wipe horizontally, then vertically, and this towel is absorbing all that loose dirt, grease, and oil. And finally, go in with your soft buffing towel, and just lightly buff the glass. And this step's gonna remove any streaks or haze from the glass. And since we're here, I always like to clean both sides of the glass, that way you can see if you missed anything. And check it out, this glass looks absolutely crystal clear and amazing, but we're not done. Don't forget about the top of the glass that you can't get to. So again, the Super Clean's all about attention to detail. We would have totally missed all this dirt and the streak right here because the window was rolled all the way up. So wipe it down with the cleaning towel, then dry it with your drying towel, and finally hit it with the buffing towel so there are no streaks. And that is all there is to cleaning the glass. So like I said, cleaning glass is not difficult. It's super easy, three-step process, you're good to go, crystal clear glass. So now let me show you how to get to the tough to reach spot between the dash and the windshield. So the technique is to have your body outside the car and extend your arm inside to wipe the windshield down. And with this method, you could reach just about half of the glass. And for where the glass meets the dash, you can see it's tight, but we are able to get down pretty close to the edge. Now let me show you this thing. This tool makes it a lot easier to reach more of the windshield. And it's really good for where the glass and dash meet because not only is it skinnier than your hand, but it's super easy to get to the edge of the glass. So clean the rest of the windshield using the same three-step process. Clean the glass, dry the glass, and then buff the glass so that it's streak-free and crystal clear. Good. And one more attention to detail to remember is to clean the rear view mirror. Many times when you adjust the rear view mirror, fingerprints get on the mirror by mistake, so cleaning this makes your rear view look crystal clear. Beautiful. And the last thing I wanna show you guys is how to clean the rear window with a heating element so we don't damage it. Now the first thing I like to do is, if you can, fold down your rear seats, that way you have a lot more room to get to your rear window. 
and typically with these heating elements, the heating lines are mostly running horizontally like this. So follow the same three-step glass cleaning process, but only wipe in the horizontal direction with the grain. Don't go against the grain and don't use too much pressure. Just lightly wipe and you won't have to worry about damaging the heating element. And that's all there is to cleaning glass with a heating element. So there you go, that is how you super clean the dashboard, the door panels, our center console, and the glass in the interior of your car. And look at how incredible this came out. Hopefully the video was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider hitting that subscribe button. And as always, all the tools and products I used in the video will be linked in the description so you could easily find them. The next video is gonna be how to super clean your seats to remove all the mud and stains from them and the transformation is crazy, so stay tuned.